hand out parking tickets and leave me alone. Stick to something you know about. Listen, my daughter was about your age. Then she met a guy like you. Now she's dead. <laughs> you still believe in ghosts, pea brain? Hello and welcome to Hello, This is the Doom Show. I am Richard. I am Brad. Folks, we are taking a little break tonight from discussing model airplanes and Barbie dolls that we each collect individually. No shame in our game to talk mm-hmm. about the 10th anniversary of Hello, This is the Doom Show. The 10th anniversary of Jello Jello, Who Moved the Tombstone. Happy anniversary, Richard. Happy anniversary, May 19th, 2011. <laughs> we put out our first episode. Oh my god. What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? What the fuck? You still there? I'm calling you back. I don't know, man. Dude, I wasn't touching anything. I was not touching my phone. My phone just keeps hanging up on you. That is so weird. I've never had that. I'm I'm assuming you're still recording. Yes. Okay, good. Let's keep let's keep going while we got it. Yes. All right. So the last <laughs> thing I heard was May nineteenth. Yep. May nineteenth, two thousand eleven. Uh, I posted the first episode of you and I talking about a little mm. movie called The Dead Are Alive. Yes, sir. And what's funny to me about this ten year anniversary is we just recorded. Episode 200. (laughs) Not too long ago. That was a huge milestone. Yeah, it was. So finding different things to talk about on the 10th year anniversary. I think we got some good stuff tonight. I think so. I think, uh, you know, everybody's kind of settled into a lane with you. There's always been like a Jeffrey movie, and we've always talked about that. Sounds like a Jeffrey movie. Yes. There are Simon movies as well. Yeah. Yeah. Jeffrey has the most distinct because Lietta can pick them now. Yeah. We'll be watching something, especially something from a little company called Vinegar Syndrome. And mm-hmm. Lietta will be like, is this a Jeffrey movie? And it always is. Mm-hmm. It always is. <laughs> she knows. She knows. Somebody I was talking to recently made the mistake of thinking that they were bad movies. I was like, well, they're not bad. They're just catered to a certain taste. Yeah. You're flexible enough to... Uh... To kind of go, I mean, it doesn't mean that uh, uh, if a movie's a Jeffrey movie, I don't like it. Yeah, exactly. You know, sometimes I see movies and I, I say, that's a Jeffrey movie and I hope you guys do it. Oh, we do. Every time without, no, we don't do everything, but we want to. Right. In order to get this partly started, I was thinking of doing a little thank you to the listeners first. Okay. Because, you know, you and I started this thing when nobody was listening Mm-hmm. And, you know, there, there are a few people out there who are from, they're listening to us from episode one, which is terrifying to imagine. Hopefully they can't remember back that far. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I know we can't thank everybody, but I have a few people just off the top of my head here who are, mm-hmm. have been diggity down forever. We're going to talk, of course, about our pal Ted. Mm-hmm. Our pal Ted is awesome. Ted Rossum, you're awesome. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's perfect. Uh, our pal Mark, who, uh, you know, he, he'd been a longtime listener, and then he became a, a full-time uh, contributor to the show and frickin' uh, many emails. Very nice guy. Yeah, I owe Mark an email right now. Sorry, Mark. Oh, this is a perfect reminder. <laughs> yes. Um, our buddy Martin Luther Presley. MLP. Um, hopefully he's watching movies. I was listening to an old episode where he wrote in and he said that, uh, sometimes he doesn't watch movies at all for like months at a time. He won't watch movies. And I was like, what do what now? Uh, I mean, I think we all know what he's watching right now. <laughs> he's watching uh freaking uh, sinister eyes of Dr. Orloff. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Classic. Uh, got a broken th- light bulbs. <laughs> Got to thank our bud, Court Psyops, uh, from the Cinema Court. Psyops podcast. He came out to me as a longtime Doom Show fan. Like, I knew he'd been listening for a while, but Court was like, 
let me tell you about this show, you know? <laughs> it was so good. I learned a lot about him that night. Yeah. Uh, Court was very kind to have me on his podcast a time or two. Yeah. That was uh, very I enjoyed fun. it. Him and yeah, Matt. Court's him a solid dude. Him and Matt rocking it over at Cinema PsyOps. Matt doesn't like me. Matt likes everybody. No, I don't think so. <laughs> Uh, Glenn Del Rossi, wanted to, wanted to do a shout out to Glenn. He is freaking my Instagram hero. When he posts a movie, he posts all the movies. Uh, right. He will he will post a fistful of Blu-rays that he got in front of his massive wall of movies. And it's just astonishing. That dude is a movie collector out of control. Uh, Travis Linthicum. Very nice dude. I'd love to hear more from our pal Travis. Mm -hmm. uh, he called in on episode 200, I believe, and very nice things to say. And then there's uh, Elliot. Elliot is a cool dude for contributing to the show. AJ is also awesome. You guys, we're going to get around to y'all's listener requests one of these days. It's going to happen. It's picking the right person to talk to about a specific movie. So there's always a lot of shuffling going on. Right. Also, filmmakers who have appeared on the Doom Show recently, Matt Farley and Charles Roxburgh, are apparently super fans of the Doom Show, so that's why I had to bring them both on. Man, I was uh, thinking about Matt Farley today and how much I love him. <laughs> He's so Which, I mean, great. That's almost every day, but he did a uh, long time listeners might remember that he did a. Uh, I purchased a song that he wrote yes. for my brother's birthday. Oh, it's been <laughs> five years ago, probably. Oh, my God. That song but, uh, is so good. So, so good. <laughs> of course, he wrote he wrote our theme, uh, which yeah. we, we don't currently use. But Dude, sometimes I'll, I'll I just- I'll drop it in I, today. Uh, sometimes I just throw it in my, my YouTube machine. And find where you've posted it and just listen to it. And it's it's like a bag of chips. You cannot listen just <laughs> once. You cannot. I listen to it like six times. It's so good. It's so good. I told Elizabeth, I said, when he sings Brad, he's talking about me. <laughs> and I say, when he talks about the death of the old salesman, he's talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> which is so funny like i can't even pinpoint the episode where the the joke the death of the old salesman happened like it just got stuck so in, funny. in rotation of, of jokes and i don't remember, even remember <laughs> and david assassino or oh as i like to call him david ban me oh my god assassino dude david person the one and only mm -hmm. i asked you the other day like whatever happened to david person and you're like that's <laughs> david assassino i'm like oh okay i got you <laughs> no he he inspires me he and i talk music all the time he has fantastic uh -huh. taste in music and he's just one of the cool kids that i don't know how the hell he talks to me like uh, him when he watches movies, he posts screenshots from them. They always inspire me <clears throat> to dig up something. He watches stuff on VHS. Like he wanted to find like the Spanish language VHS, maybe like the like just for example, the Fog. Like he'll find like the the Spanish tape of the Fog and watch that because mm -hmm. he's bilingual and he'll like freaking know what they're saying. And he'll he'll, he'll right. find those really obscure Spanish horror movies and do those. But his his love of of capturing that that enigmatic weirdness of all these old films that we love like he's he's a pretty cool dude can't say enough great things about david i don't hear from him very often since i quit the facebook but uh but yeah he's a long time listener uh he sent me some very cool stuff yeah he sent me some records sent oh. me a big bunch of records one yeah. time i was he like sent, sent me a record i love it we both love the jangle pop so yes <laughs> the big big jangle pop fan oh my god uh, very cool dude i remember he thought i was stupid because i thought his name was david person well and he's like that's dude, not even a weird person. last name no there's people with the last name person i mean i know his name's not assassino but <laughs> person person could have been real yep. i know his real name oh mm -hmm. Talk, mm -hmm. that's the uh, top secret information my friend it is. It is. It's not David Person. <laughs> but he's a, he's a great dude. Our pal Paul Chandler 
Uh, he is the, the shy Yeti, uh, the, the shy life podcast, uh, super nice guy. Um, his podcast is, uh, I think he's up to episode 400 or something crazy like that. Dang. He's a journeyman podcaster. I, I don't even know how he does it, but he's great. Uh, you got some people you want to thank on your listener list, buddy? I do. Uh, David Ladd. Oh, yeah. A long time listener. Good friend of mine. Wonderful. Uh, Wonderful. Him and his wife have actually started a podcast. You should check it out yeah. if you haven't. The Movie Clinic Podcast. Like you mentioned, Ted, I talk to him all the time. Lanny, Lanny and Beth, my yes. cousin and cousin-in-law. Oh, yes. Uh, they have been known to go to another state and listen to us on the way there or back or both. Nice. Uh, that's pretty much my list. I haven't talked to David Ladd in a while. I need to do that. Should do it. And some of the longtime listeners we're going to mention later because they ended up showing up on the show. Right. Okay. Here is the part of the show where I realize I forgot a lot of people. So here's me months later adding some other people to our thank you list. Jamie and Brian Simmons, you guys are amazing. Jamie's always been a huge fan of the Doom Show, and she's a wonderful podcaster and a wonderful all-around great person. And Brian is amazing. Brian Simmons, look for his Cthulhu books. He edited a uh, collection of Cthulhu stories. He's amazing. Shrub, Shrub of GoblinHouse.com. He's always been an awesome dude been talking to him for many years and uh, i think he might listen to the show against his better judgment of course there is good old uh page and uh jeff uh you guys are awesome um jeff is the amazing guy who sold me his screams of a winter night blu-ray at a very reasonable price because i didn't want to pay the banana man uh derek our pal Derek, Derek Bourgeois, D. Bougie. Uh, Derek is a great guy, wonderful podcaster, and uh, I like him. Oh, man, and if I forgot anybody else, I'm sorry. I knew going into this, this was going to be a terrible idea that we'd forget people no matter what we did. So insert your name here because you're awesome, listener. So here's the work I put into this episode. Brad, are you ready for this, this scintillating question? Yes. How many hours of the Doom Show are there? How many hours of podcasting have have we done over the years? So we're, you know, not far over 200 episodes. Yep. So you figure on average an hour a piece, which some are much longer. Yep. I think there might have been like a 48 minute episode here and there. Yeah, there's a few short ones. Yeah, so I'm going to guess 280. Ooh, that's a good guess, but you have missed the mark. Ugh. At the time of this recording, out of 225 episodes, <laughs> there is 314 hours. Of Hello, wow. This is the Doom Show. That's longer than a 40-hour work week. Wow. 314 <laughs> hours. Well, I wasn't that far No, off, you did good. You did I, really good. I was under. You know, I did not think about it. I just I waited until you asked me. Nice. I was way over. I figured we were hitting 400, but no, that's a goal. <laughs> yeah, it is. After uh, Simon and I get around to our uh, Twin Peaks, the next generation talk, and it'll be 500 hours. Cause, uh, Absolutely, it will be. I feel like I could probably not rewatch that Twin Peaks season three and not have any notes, and Simon wouldn't notice. I feel like he would just hit no. the ground running, and I'd have to like be like, all right, dude, I got to go eat lunch now. Just kidding. It's dinner time. <laughs> Mm, you could actually just everything that you said to him could have been out of a cookbook and he would not notice because he he is Twin Peaks's number one fan. Dude, yep. It's wild. Him and Martin Luther Presley. Martin Luther Presley, he loved that season three. Did he really? No, he, he hated it. That's right. It was hilarious. And I was like, maybe I shouldn't be on the internet. You should be on the internet more to counteract it. I did. I did exactly so, that. So, <laughs> well, all right. So, we know that I'm not 
a twin twin Peaksian. Yes. What without spoiling anything, because there's probably people that haven't what did he not like about season three? That it had been like 40 years since season two? He did a running commentary of everything he didn't like. It was very specific, a stream of consciousness live as he watched it. Comments. Ah. Uh, and it was- The heat in, of the moment, it was, as Asia would say. It was hilarious. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know what he was expecting. <laughs> yeah, I mean- <laughs> It was great. You know. We'll ask yeah. him. We'll ask him. We should tell us. So tell us it'll gonna, be. We love you. You can hate we Twin do. Peaks season three all you want. We're just having fun. Which fun times? We man. miss you. We haven't heard from you in a long time. He's like, leave my German ears alone. My German ears are burning. <laughs> <laughs> so let's talk history of the show briefly, okay? Because uh, I, I really think we went into this on episode two hundred, but. Um, yeah, we we started this bad boy uh, because of the Nashi cast. They were mm-hmm. super inspiring. The, their episodes covering the films of Paul Nashi, very yep. thorough, scene by scene, which is how you and I just assume that's how you're supposed to do movie podcasts because of them. Yeah, and that's the way we did it for a long time. Yes, especially with Murder Mansion. <laughs> Murder Mansion. Yep, we murder mansioned the episode on Murder Mansion. That's why it's been murdered. Mm-hmm. That's right, and mansioned. And uh, we started to hit our stride. It, it took us a while to get out of the um, a new episode every four months kind of a thing. Right. Uh, but then um, you had commitments at work that mm. you could not mm. get out of under any circumstances. So None. Um, we pulled in some, some irregular Joes. Nafa... Our buddy Nafa, our dearly departed friend, uh, he absolutely. I believe he was one of the first regulars because he and I, you and I, had just started doing our Rob Zombie series, mm-hmm. and I really was like, "Oh, dude, that's gonna mess up our thing." And I was like, "Nafa loves those movies," and you're like, "Well, have Nafa on the show," and so we did that, and mm-hmm. uh, we did cause Nafa and I started with uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween Two, and then we did everything after that. Devil's Rejects, we went and we did House of a Thousand Corpses and stuff. You talked about us three doing um, ah, yes. The Lords of Salem. Yep. And you talked about that for like a year. And because <laughs> I'm the master of procrastination, we just we never did. And of course, nope. it was too late. Yep. And we never got around to it. <laughs> we still haven't done it. But you know what? We'll, no. Yeah. You know, we'll get around to it. It's not it's not yeah. never going to happen. Well, I think about uh, when I think about Nafa in the show, I think about Karate Pete. Oh yeah, oh, my God! Yes, Nafa was a larger than life character, very close friend of mine, and he he passed away very young at forty seven, which is just ridiculous. Mm. Uh, and, and it was pretty crazy for me and for his family and for people who loved him, and he left behind. A lot of music and a lot of, luckily, a lot of podcast episodes. Mm-hmm. So if you go through the archives, like I just, after four years uh, of keeping it as the first movie in the feed, I had, uh, or the oldest movie in the feed, I had him and me talking about Death Warmed Up, <laughs> very aptly titled for his final episode. Wow. Uh, I had that up for four years. And I finally was like, you know what? We're good. I can, I can let this one slide into the uh, the old archives. Yeah, um, I mean, it's your call, yeah, you know, if you feel exactly. like it's, it's cool, then it's cool. We talk about them enough, and and also, like, if you go through the Doom to Show Classics list on uh, frickin' YouTube, which is a pain in the ass to keep mm-hmm. going because of all the music we used in past episodes. Right. <laughs> it's like, what do you mean I can't have Ennio Morricone in my frickin' episode? Uh, I mean... I don't know what the big deal is. It's not like you're charging people for it. No. No. And I'm so far away from monetizing. Like, um, when I look at the the chart, the show, like, oh, how close am I to having, like, the ability to monetize my channel? And I'm, like, 1% of the numbers you need. Like, across the board, I'm supposed to have X amount of listeners, and I have 1% uh, subscribers. I have 1% of that number. (laughs) See, until this very moment, I didn't even know what the criteria was. It's popularity. 
<laughs> okay. And my channel, because I don't, I just don't post enough. I work so much harder on the podcast because it's easy. I'm a subscriber. It's e- thank you. It's easier You're and welcome. it's more fun than recording videos because podcasting is so much more fun. Yeah, it is. You know, but yeah, Nafo, he will never, never be forgotten on this freaking show. You know, the Shatner series, Dude. personal favorite of mine. Dude, we were we had so many plans for that. We didn't even get to Kingdom of the Spiders. I know. The the freaking The Devil's Reign was that was oh my god, that was so fun. You know, I've got it. that Blu-ray and I've still not watched it. I've I've seen the film, yeah. but I oh, bought yeah. the Blu-ray and nice. I still haven't I need to get around to that. I asked someone the other day, I said, who is the greatest living Canadian? And they said, William Shatner. And I said, you've heard me say this before. It's true. <laughs> it's true. I, I called him America's treasure. And Nava's yeah, like, absolutely. And I was like, he's Canadian. I'm like, he's Canada's treasure. Yeah. He's space's treasure. After Nafa joined, um, we had a, we had a, a man who came in just to talk about a movie or two. And then he, uh-huh. nev- he never left. That was Jeffrey. Still here. Yep. Still going strong. Uh, Jeffrey, his first episode was uh, The House of the Laughing Windows. And he, nice. he and I barely knew each other at all. So it's a nice, awkward episode. And uh, because of my old techniques of recording, it sounds like hot garbage. But, you know, it's, it's, a, it's <laughs> it was a first. So it was fun. And, right. and real quick, we, we figured out the Jeffrey formula, which is... He and I will always, will probably always go scene by scene with what we talk about because mm-hmm. his speciality is picking apart those moments that you can't explain. You need to talk about them. And in order for that scene to make sense, you have to talk about the scenes before and after it. So it's very right. obnoxious. It's a lot of work, but it's always worth it for films like my, one of my favorite films of all time, um, freaking uh, Nightmare Weekend. Right. My recent rewatch of Nightmare Weekend just proved to me that it's in my top five favorite horror movies. It's it has everything. It's it's grotesque. It's stupid and it's hilarious. Tacky. <laughs> oh man. So yeah. What else can I say about Jeffrey? He is a book collector, dude. What the hell? The um, I don't talk to Jeffrey very often at all, and but you it's should. because. He well, he's very busy. Oh, he's, he's very, very, very important, busy. Yes. and he's very busy, and he's very important. <laughs> but when I do talk to Jeffrey, it's it's about books. It's not movies. Exactly. He's he's collecting horror novels, and he's collecting young adult horror novels, and like obscure science fiction novel. He's collecting everything, and the weirder the yeah. cover, the older the cover, the oldest version he can find, he buys it, and he just goes crazy. And I thought he lived in an apartment, and now right. I think he lives in a library. Yeah, no kidding. He bought some John Dixon car books, and we talked about those. Yeah, yeah. And I always consult him on uh, what Valancourt is releasing. Yeah. Uh, the wise. horror. Very wise. Yeah. Yeah, and Elizabeth enjoys his his Instagram posts because it's a lot of books and we own a lot of books i think he owns more than we do yeah he's he's crazy i love it this is jeffrey this is jeffrey this is jeffrey hi brad hi richard uh this is jeffrey just a quick correction uh to brad's previous statement uh, looking at today's count, I have approximately 110 John Dixon Carr vintage paperback and some hardcover editions in my library. Uh, that's all. 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 And then along came a Simon. We we uh. Simon's a longtime listener of the show. Jeffrey was a longtime listener of the show, too. Uh, but Simon, we'd known for many years. And uh, I want to say he did a solo podcast. And I was like, whoa. Or I had yeah. him. I can't remember which came first. If I, if I asked him to be on the show for a guest spot where I just interviewed him about his horror movie likes. Because he's from the UK. The, the UK-ness. Right. I think you... Uh... You kind of interviewed him the first time, I exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I, w- I wanted to get his perspective on horror fandom, and we talked and talked and talked. And then next thing you know, he's a, a regular on the show. He brings it, dude. He freaking brings it. Yeah, he does. We have some laughs. 
he, he was he was there when I realized I take too many notes on on movies. He and I were doing The Church, mm-hmm. and The Church is a wonderful film. But when you're taking notes on every scene, you want to kill yourself. <laughs> yeah, that'd be a tough one. Uh, the, the, and the best thing that came out of it, other than the the episode itself, because I love that episode, is uh, don't keep me waiting for those onions, Herman. <laughs> <laughs> which I think we would have missed if we weren't going scene by scene. So it's fine. Right. <laughs> it worked out. But yeah, Simon and I, we do the long, we did some of the long form stuff where, you know, we did all the nightmare on Elm street movies and we split it up cause we were just going too long. I think the next nightmare on Elm street trilogy we're talking about is three and a half hours. I'm trying to get it down to three hours. Wow. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> That's some Elm Street talking. Oh my God, it's insane! And uh, he and I have plans to get back. We did a t- big two-parter of Twin Peaks, uh, season one and two, which and uh, Fire Walk with Me, which I'm very happy with. Um, those keep getting flagged on uh, YouTube, so they're in the archives. So. <laughs> wow! And then I got married after all this. No, I've been married this whole time. The entire time. The entire time this was happening, uh, Liette and I, uh, my wife, got married in. Oh my God, 2005, in case she's listening. And uh, she kept hearing us talk, and eventually she got on the show. Yes, she did. And Liette and I are hilarious because we both enjoy talking, obviously, uh, me more than her. And we keep talking about all these episodes, and it's just a matter of not watching um, Iron Man 3 again. Mm -hmm. All we have to do is not watch Thor Ragnarok, and we could record an episode. We keep going through all of the Marvel, the MCU movies over and over again instead of doing something more productive. <laughs> right. I don't blame you. Uh, no, I don't blame myself either. Those movies are freaking addictive. Yeah, they are. That's the plan, Colonel. I gotta put her in the we're, water. We're doing that right now, actually. Tony! You guys look like two seals fighting over a grape. Yeah, I gotta. I can quote these movies forever. <laughs> 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 I, I just love all these movies. Yeah, you do. Uh, Me too. So yeah, Lieta brings it. She loves witch movies. So we're uh, we started a little witch series, and we're gonna try to get back to those and just talk about witch movies. Lieta is a unicorn. She does not exist. She is a real woman. <laughs> yeah, her interests are uh, parallel with mine, but very different from mine. Uh huh. And I think that's that's the thing. Like you know, we gotta find somebody who. If they're into everything you're into, that's great. But if they're not, as long as they're open-minded about what you do and don't harsh on your buzz while you're enjoying what you enjoy and you do the same for them, you should be good to go. Yeah. Because eventually I started watching uh, British period pieces with her. Like, Yeah, you did. I even have my favorite freaking Persuasion, the Jane Austen adaptation, the 90s one, mm-hmm. which is one of my favorite films of all time. And we watch it constantly. And then one day as a couple, you discover Grease 2 together. Grease 2, and then Grease- Michelle Pfeiffer. Oh, my God. Johnny, I don't want to eat alone. Like, it's a freaking classic movie. Gotta watch Grease 2. And so, yes, Lieta, Lieta will be back on the show more often. I promise. Very talented. Very, very Dude, talented artist. Artist. She can play piano a little bit. She can sing a lot. Yeah. She freaking- uh, She's a lover of animals. She gives, she gives the cat her eye medicine and her freaking everything medicine. It's great. You did well. You <laughs> I did. Very did. Well. I married above my station. Boy, I did. <laughs> so did you. Yeah. No. There'd be there'd be no Brad without Elizabeth. That's true. But there was a connection to Lietta from many a year ago. Is her mother, my mother-in-law, Margie. She was a patron of Hello, This is the Doom Show. Mm-hmm. Bought, uh, me the, bought me the MP3 recorder. Yes, she did. I remember when the the dragons got stolen. <laughs> we had uh, foo dogs. We had foo dogs. We had a pair of them that guarded our front door, and someone stole one of them. This little cheap. during the show, she, yes, or she discovered yeah. it during the show. <laughs> she was so mad at me because I didn't react properly. Right, because <laughs> I was supposed to get up and go run around and look for it, but I'm like, dude, we live in a not a bad neighborhood, but we live in a shitty neighborhood, so you're never gonna see that thing again. No, they're they're gone. She uh, <laughs> she would send like you would send us a box, and there would be stuff in it from Margie. Yeah, uh, uh, homemade washcloths, dish rags. Yep, always. We've got some Christmas stuff that she sent us that we proudly put up uh, every year. 
uh, just a lovely lady. And it was just very sad, sad for Lietta, sad for you. But yeah, I mean, anytime we have one of these anniversary or, you know, uh, special episodes, we always want to mention Margie. Yeah, she was a hell of a lady. She was smart as a whip. She had a book collection that was as big or bigger than Lietta's and mine. She had crazy book, uh, crazy interests. She did modeling at one point. I was, uh, we found her modeling photos the other day where she was going for the magazines and stuff like that. Lovely. She's a lovely lady. She could get all classed up and dolled up. It was incredible. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. She was really funny when she would interrupt the show and when her, uh, she was dealing with some health issues and she wasn't always all there. So one day she just walked in and just launched into this diatribe. And I'm staring at her, and the microphone is on. <laughs> I've got you on the phone, and we're just sitting there looking at I'm like, I just imagined you were there with me, looking at her like, where is this going? And it was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, my God. It was so funny. We should have had her on the show as a freaking co-host. Boy, we should have. It's a missed <laughs> opportunity. Oh, but speaking of co-hosts, uh, I'm going to start with some, uh, some freaking one-shot funsters, as I call them. Some people mm-hmm. that guest starred on the show just one time. Oh, Leah is trying to catch the cat. Time for somebody's medicine. We were just talking about giving a cat medicine. Oh, wow. How'd she take the pill? She drooled a lot. Well, folks at home, Gorgon, our cat, she has taken her pill, which is very important, and she drooled a lot because she has no teeth. <laughs> right. It sounds good. <laughs> She's going to be two in a couple weeks. Oh, who knew that sometimes you have a young cat with no teeth? It really does happen. Looking at you. I have an old cat with no teeth. <laughs> looking at you, Luna. <laughs> yep. She has a young soul, though. She does. She says, <laughs> eh, eh. That's, that's all she says. Eh. <laughs> so unless I'm missing somebody, I have four people who have done. I, have, I initially had three, but I remembered the fourth one. I had three people okay. who have been on the show plus one. Uh, freaking Jose, our buddy Jose Cruz. Jose. Yes, sir. He had his own podcast for a, l- a little while, and um, I told him to stop. I said, you can't have a podcast too, mister. Yeah. No, he, he stopped on his own. In fact, um, one of the episodes that uh, I appeared on of his show was Lost Forever. Uh, it was His computer died. His computer died, and yeah. he lost multiple episodes. Very sad. Terrible. Jose's a wonderful guy, very talented writer, just awesome. Uh, I know Jose very, very slightly. I got to meet him in Weird. person. He's a, he's a Florida boy. Ooh. Yeah, he brought me some Florida movies. Boy. We went to a place called Chronic Tacos, and I was like, Chronic Tacos! <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we had fun. He's he's a really cool guy. He wanted to go to Grindhouse Video, so we, uh, back uh, yeah, he did. pre-pandemic, we hopped in the car and went over there and had a blast. I'm oh, sure. And uh, another dude on the show, a friend of mine, Eric Grubbs. Um, Eric and I knew each other on an old message board a long time ago that had nothing to do with movies at all. We were um, talking music and uh, Russian satellite plans. No, just music. Uh, but Eric okay. Eric is a drummer and I believe a bass player as well. He's a very talented writer. Um, he wrote a you book. You know a lot of drummers. I Have try. You I, that? Dude, I'm a terrible you guitar player. Them. I'm a terrible guitar player. What do we <laughs> you do? Are not. What do we do? We collect drummers and we mm. we use them for their talents until they get sick of us. Rely on the drummers, <laughs> Richard. <laughs> but Eric wrote a book called Post, and he wrote about uh, post hardcore and and emo bands. I believe you can still get Post, and I think he might be working on the sequel to that book. Uh, but he, which he, is post post, it'll be double post. It'll be the, hmm. um, it's called Gerald's game where he gets tied to a, <laughs> <laughs> he gets tied to a bedpost. <laughs> That's funny. That came out of nowhere. Good um, on you. Thank you. Thank you. Eric writes a lot of music articles. He's just a super cool dude. Uh, next up was, uh, Craig, um, uncommon interests podcast. Craig, I haven't talked to him in a while, but he and I interact on Twitter still. Mm-hmm. Uh, but he and I, oh, I, I forgot to talk about the freaking the episode with Eric. Holy shit. Uh, Eric and I recorded an episode. We're going to do Black Christmas. We had a mm-hmm. very limited window to get the episode recorded before it was too late for it to come out by Christmas. And my Skype went down so bad. I did, This is back when all you had to do is restart your computer. And it was right before you 
that was the like that's like the IT joke. Did you try restarting? Did you try restarting? Mm-hmm. So right. I didn't know. All I had to do was restart. We would have been fine. I was bless you. I was short. Bless her. I was uh, missing an update, and that's all I did was get that update, and we would have been fine. But uh, sure enough, Eric ended up recording me on his end with me on speakerphone, so I became speakerphone Brad. Mm. And I tried to record just me on my side, and it did not work out at all. Like, I could not sync it up. Something happened. So, we just ran the Black Christmas episode as is, and it's terrible. It's the only time where I've sounded like I was a million miles away. It was ridiculous. Mm. Luckily, I taught you how to make the best (laughs) of speakerphone. Yes. By upgrading into an MP3 recorder. Right. Yeah. And then uh, Craig and I talked about uh, that Giallo, the 60s Giallo, uh, Naked You Die. Mm. And that was that was a good time had by all. But yeah, the mm. the one I forgot is one of my favorite people on the planet because he's so ripped. That is Death Rattle Aaron. Oh, Death Rattle Aaron. Yes. He came on and talked about one of my favorite horror movies of all time. We talked about Baby Blood. Baby Baby Blood, yeah. yes. Um, I love that episode. I love making him laugh. Um, he kind of retired from podcasting. I'm always hoping that uh, that Death Rattle Aaron will come back. I'm hoping Death Rattle Aaron will come back to writing about movies. I always enjoyed his reviews on his old blog. But he is yeah, now I like Aaron. ripped. This dude, his Instagram is him at the gym ripping freaking muscles. It's redonkulous. Wow. He could tear us in half from Shh. from Hawaii. He could kill us yeah. all the way from Hawaii. It's a solid guy, Aaron. Yeah. Literally and figuratively. <laughs> Do you ever hear from him? We don't chit chat much, but he and I like will interact on Instagram a little bit. Not enough. Definitely not enough. Right. Uh, but yeah, that's those are the people that came on. So now we have a return. We have a recurring character. A person who is not a regular, but certainly has shown up more than once, and that's good old Christian. Heck yeah, Christian. Christian and Jacob, we're, we're doing a podcast there, and then uh, Jacob wanted to go and uh, become a teacher and write books, so that's what he did. And uh, Christian had a podcast go on a solo thing for a little while, uh-huh. and then uh, he just shows up on the Doom Show once in a while to, to shoot the Schmidt. Yeah, he's from the town that rhymes with fun. Mm-hmm. Regina. In Canada. Yeah, he's a bona fide Canadian. He is. He's very friendly. I've got a picture of a Canadian Mountie that looks a lot like Christian. (laughs) You can't convince me it's not him. Well, I wouldn't try. I met Christian. I got to meet him and his wife, Courtney, and their buddies. uh, We went to a theme park. Speaking Mm -hmm. of pre Bush Gardens? uh, We went to... uh, We we met him in Orlando. We did uh, Epcot, and then we did... uh, Uh, Oh, no. Adventure Island? Something. The, whichever one has the Harry Potter stuff. Universal Harry Potter land. There you go. Nailed it. Potterville. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I don't remember. I, and I was there. But we had a good time. He tr- you, he tricked me into going onto that mummy roller coaster. Oh. He's like, it's not that bad. bad. Christian. It's not that bad. No, it's, it's great. I'm like, all right. I should have known. It was terrifying, but I had a good time. Well, good. And I lived to tell the tale barely. Some more uh, regular, irregular boys... Uh, Scott McDonald of uh, EuroCultAV.com has been on the show quite a few times. God bless Scott McDonald. He always picks unusual stuff for us to talk about. He and I have a lost episode. I don't recall. It was off the top it of was my delicatessen. Oh. I recorded it with the Skype recorder, and we forgot to take breaks. And I haven't mm-hmm. run into this as much lately. But um, when I first started using Skype recorders and not having the person record on their end. It would go out of sync, like one or the other person, there, it would blip and it would take, the audio would just be completely off for the rest of the thing. And unless you were really willing to pick apart every single mm. sentence by each individual person and put them back where they belong, you're not going to have that episode. And that's exactly what happened with Delicatessen. Psh, that's yeah. bullshit. Man. Oh yeah, it was bullshit. And we, we've lost some segments before, but yeah, this was, and we've lost a few episodes in the past, but this was also like one of those, com- it was a complete loss. <laughs> mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Scott's been back on a few times, always brings the energy, always picks something weird. We talked about freaking uh, 
gotcha last time. That was insane. I love me some Scott McDonald, I'm going to be honest. Well, yeah, he's a great guy. Wonderful guy. Yeah, he is. Uh, folks, yep. EuroCultAV.com. Go check it out. Man, he's he's revamped it, and it just, it looks tremendous and it's easier for people who write for it so if you write for right. the, if you write for the it's like it's just posting a blog and you're done it's great i have not written for the new euro euro cult av but i am biding my time dude petition petition to have yourself back i'm gonna start a petition <laughs> uh another person who's become a, a regular person who irregularly shows up is freaking tyler Old Tyler. Tyler uh, had a show. I'm hoping he's going to bring it back someday called, oh my God, it just flew uh, out of my head. Apologize to the podcast. Yes. Based on the the uh, the quote from the movie, Apologize to the Rice, which was from uh, A Better Tomorrow 2, I believe. Uh, he'd been, he'd been uh, dude, he'd been hyping was, that movie was... and that scene and nothing could prepare uh-huh. me for the, the Apologize to the Rice scene. Tippa Canoe and Tyler too. <laughs> yes. Uh, but yes, Tyler is fun. We talk about the, the absolutely sixties stuff. He brought the first kaiju movie to the show. We talked about, and uh, he managed to catch me sleeping during the movie. It was amazing. He was talking about a scene that was so crazy. I thought he was messing with me, but it turned out I had slept through the one moment in the movie that I would have. Hated. Oh. Yes. Serendipity. It all worked out for me in the end, but then I'm like, dude, I think you have a different cut than me. And then I had to use the old computer voice to come in and explain that I had dosed off during the movies. I didn't want to own up to it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's good. That's well, cool. I'll tell you some Simonicity involving Tyler was that this past weekend I had a slasher thon. Oh, that's right. And I watched. Yeah, I watched Wrong Turn, and then he messaged me yesterday and said, uh, Wrong Turn's a pretty good movie. And I'm like, ah. well, I just recently saw it myself. I'd seen it before. I mean, it's nothing It's nothing special or anything, but it's it's a solid backwood slasher. Yeah, absolutely. But what kind of wavelength were we on there for just a moment? Oh, he just hacked your frickin' uh, webcam, dude. It's <sighs> probably right. <laughs> that's, that's Tyler the Hacker. He's like, hack the planet. Mmm. So eventually, uh, we got invited to join a, a a podcast network called Legion Podcasts. I mm. I did a guest guest appearance on a show hosted by Duncan McLeish. It was the podcast Under the Stairs, and uh, we we talked. And I I believe uh, Duncan told the guy who runs uh, Legion Podcast, good old Bo Ransdell, you need to have Doom Show on this network. And I think that's how it happened. Next thing you know, we're we're on a network. We're standing. Shoulder to shoulder with many other fine shows. Absolutely. And it's been great. Our numbers have gone up and we've hopefully contributed to the overall downfall of the website and the whole the network just by being there. Well, we certainly try. <laughs> we try to destroy everything we touch. <laughs> From within. <laughs> and without <laughs> even trying. And there you go. No, and it, I've had opportunities to get to guest star on lots of shows. It's just been so fun. Coordinating, getting other people from that network on this show is always a challenge because everyone's so busy. Uh, but we'll mm-hmm. get around to everybody eventually. Jeez. Let's have you, you had, you've had Duncan on the show, haven't you? No, I've been on Duncan's show. He's always got uh, mm-hmm. so much planned forever that mm-hmm. i it's just easier for me to just be like dude i will be on your show and he's like that's what i'm messaging you about and i was like oh okay i was pretending it was my idea yeah uh, i see <laughs> i see duncan was on episode 232 that's 232 Meep. speaking of people who work out all the time and make me look like a lazy piece of garbage he's like oh yeah i'm zero percent body fat <laughs> i'm like oh my god i'm gonna kill you <laughs> who Duncan is? Dude, he's crazy in shape. Crazy. Really? I don't know. I don't know, dude. I don't think we should talk to people like that. I'm against it. I'll tell you that right off the bat. I'm a sellout, though. I've been doing crunches lately because I'm, I'm a sicko. I've been eating crunch bars. <laughs> dude, That's all I've been doing. Let's, eat, let's make a pack to eat crunch bars together on a show. <laughs> we should. Just the sounds of us chewing on them. Yeah. <laughs> You and I both thought of this topic at the same time separately. We were thinking about talking about movies that we've covered on this show over the years mm-hmm. 
that suddenly magically got Blu-rays. Suddenly. Because magically. we were talking about this shit when it was bootleg city population yeah, we us. Were. Yeah, there. Um, and I want to say with a hint of bitterness, but op- just slightly optimistic bitterness. Uh, optimistic will, bitterness we'll, is our motto. Exactly. Here on Jello Jello, who moved the tombstone? I will get into Boom. the real bitterness because we we haven't done any freaking audio commentaries for anyone yet. But nobody. Only because we're not professional. Only because <laughs> I can't imagine why they would not want us on their discs. Right. Um, the movie I'm talking about is The Haunting of Julia, which finally showed up on Shudder mm-hmm. in HD. Looks amazing. I have not sat down to watch it yet. I should. But that usually means somebody somewhere is probably going to put it out soon. So I'm hoping that Haunting of Julia, a movie that you and I have been championing, championing since mm-hmm. episode nine. Really? Yep. Crazy. Wow. So... One of the first films we talked about was Next of Kin. Mm-hmm. Uh, as we made it clear on episode two, <laughs> is not the Patrick Swayze movie Next of Kin. Was that really episode two? That was episode two. That got See? a Blu-ray. Wow. I own it. That is nuts, dude. That is crazy. I bought, it, bought it for Trevor, too. Nice. Oh, very kind. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, Freaking, well, Symptoms has a Blu-ray. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's episode six. We talked about this. See, that's the thing. We were into these movies before they were even made, bro. Dude, we planted <laughs> the seeds. Because a movie doesn't exist until it has a Blu-ray. That's all I'm saying. Well, it's the truth. <laughs> episode seven, The Horrible Dr. Hitchcock. Horrible Secret of Dr. Yeah. Hitchcock. That got a Blu-ray. It did. I believe it's the American Cut. It is. It does uh, not. And I have not watched it. Uh, me neither, because we're, we're naughty. Um, but I watched that bootleg so many times. I love you that movie. You sent me the bootleg. Ah. That was in the legendary mythical first set. Yes, of stuff that you sent yes. <laughs> was uh, the horrible secret of oh Doctor Hitchcock. Oh God, it's so good. So yes, one day we'll have the, the Italian version too. But it's yep, just the it's fact happening. that it's out there is incredible. I've acquired the Blu-rays of a double feature we did back in episode twelve. Which is Screams of a Winter's Night. Oh, yeah. And Jennifer. Amazing. Yeah, those both have Blu-rays now. Um, Somebody sold me their copy of the Code Red Banana Man Screams of a Winter's Night. I think it was Mr. Barton. Was it? Not not the, uh, not the Hawkeye. Not Hawkeye. The other Barton. The other Barton. And it was very nice to sell it to me. It gave me a very fair price because, of course, it had gone out of print. Um, I'm sure he did. He's he's a very cool guy. Exactly. Does he listen to the show? I hope he does. <laughs> well, I hope he does too. Yeah. Let's see what else I'm scrolling with the homies. It's easy. I haven't talked to him since I quit Facebook. You'll be back. It's easier to see the ones that um still don't have a blue, which drives me crazy. Well, like like the ghosts. Well, there's one. There's one that I still that I think you should mention. Still think you should mention that mm. did get a Blu-ray. What's that? Terror. Oh shit! Yeah, Norman J. Warren's Terran. Terran. Yes. <laughs> Norman J. Terror is Warren. <laughs> yes. And sadly, we we recently lost to Mr. Warren. Crazy. Uh, yeah, the demon has no Blu-ray yet. Nope. Uh, Barbara Steele and the ghost. Speaking of Ricardo Freda, no Blu-ray yet. Ugh. Crazy. I would take Ghost Blu-ray over an uncut Horrible Daughter Hitchcock, and that's the truth. <laughs> yes. The the Ghost is magic. I love that freaking movie. It is such a good movie. Let's see. I'm scrolling around here. What, what, where, what, where? Oh, my. Murder Clinic could be a good Blu-ray. Absolutely. We did that. We mm-hmm. did that. Well, here's another one. Yes. Uh, the Corruption of Chris Miller got a Blu-ray. Yes. Did we, we covered that. We did. Didn't we? Did we? Well, we should have. We should have covered it. I'm Googling. I'm using... I'm telling you folks, after 200-something episodes, sometimes you forget. No, we never... I don't think we ever did it. That's sad. We should bump that up. Should we should. That. People want to hear us talk it's about that. Great, yeah, it's a great movie. Tragic Ceremony has no Blu-ray. Ugh. What the hell? Torture Chamber uh, of Dr. Sadism has one coming out, apparently. Yeah, they do. That's Yay. your jam right there. Yeah, dude. That's my childhood jam. Yeah, it is. Uh, Satan's Blood Uh, got a Blu-ray. 
did Murder Obsession have a Blu-ray when we did it? Yes. That, okay, that I was, couldn't remember. Uh, you could have knocked me over with a feather when that one got a Blu-ray. And it was from Raro, and it wasn't yes. bad. <laughs> it wasn't terrible. Raro, that, hey. Which is Raro. Ha ha! They're at the mercy of the freaking companies that uh, do the transfers. It sucks. Yeah. It's, it's, not, it's not ideal. Uh, we still don't have a Blu-ray of House with Laughing Windows. Mm-hmm. There is not a single Tomie movie. You and I talked about a Tomie movie. Uh, we and did. It, it, no, zero, zilch Blu-rays for nine movies. I'm, everyone's talking about, hey, where's the box set of that? Because that's a, that'd be wonderful. Where is it? Even the bad ones are fun, so get them. We did another double feature. Yeah, we did a Curse. Uh, no, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Pulse. Pulse, a.k.a. Cairo. Uh, that got a Blu-ray. Nice. Like, super really? nice. Yeah, Arrow put out a nice one of that one. Very nice. Uh, the, the, that was a double feature with Sick Nurses, and nobody did a, a Sick Nurses Blu-ray. <laughs> <laughs> but they should. But they should. Uh, Jeffrey and I, Once Upon a Time, did Demons 6. De Profundis, yep. a.k.a. The Black De Cat. De Profundis. By Lucia, uh, uh, Luigi, oh, fuck. <laughs> Luigi Cozzi, or Luigi Cozy. That got a freaking Blu-ray finally. It's so wonderful. Didn't you and Jeffrey do Spider Labyrinth? No, we've never done Spider Labyrinth. No, I was thinking you guys had. We that should. Blu ray. I, I think that it might be because that one is, I think it's just a very serious film. It takes itself uh-huh. very seriously. That That's like, I think the guy wanted to do a, uh, <laughs> I think that dude wanted to do like a house with the laughing windows, but like a, a more, you know, grotesque horror version. So. It uh-huh. it might not be that fun to, for him and I to talk about, but it's a great movie. Huh. Going through these episodes, just scrolling through them, man, this is one hell of a freaking fun time. We did what we love, dude. Yeah, we did. Oh, fuck. Girls Night Out? Where's that Blu-ray? No Blu-ray. I can't remember. Did, the, uh, did Entrapo Falgas have that Blu-ray out when we did it? No, it did not. It does now. I've got the 88 films. Nice. Nice. Anthropophagus. Mutant is not on Blu-ray. No. I love Mutant. Yeah, Mutant's dangling in the breeze. I don't think there are any SF Brown Rig uh, Blu-rays. And we are the only show in the world, folks, (laughs) that was brave enough to cover the films of SF Brown Rig. That is one of my all-time favorite episodes of ours, dude. I I love it. It's so fun. Funny, like that is a f- that and the prom night megasode. I have those on repeat all the time. We're we're amazing. Case of the bloody iris, still no Blu-ray. <laughs> still no Blu-ray. What the That's hell, stupid. dude? Oh boy. Next month, he knows you're alone. It's coming out on Blu-ray. Man, that is one of my favorite episodes as well. That's where the uh, he's a closet came from. He's a closet. That is a great episode, folks. Highly recommend it. We've covered a lot of fun stuff. Yes, it's massive. Lady Frankenstein was our two-year anniversary. That's right. That's got a Blu-ray. Yeah. Wild. Uh-oh. I have not Devil's gotten Wedding it yet. Night. I still haven't gotten that Lady really? Frankenstein one yet. Yeah, Devil's Wedding Night got a blue. What? Devil's Wedding Night and Death Smiled at Murder, both on Blu-ray. That was our double feature. Seven Bloodstained Orchids now has a Blu-ray. See, it folks, certainly does. We were doing these for years. The thing is, folks, we've tried over the years to, you know, we'll we'll do our Halloween super shows and we'll do our, our breakdowns of uh, all the, the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. One day we're going to do all the Friday the 13th films. But we have tried to do stuff that's outside of the box a little bit. Like all this, oh, yeah. all this stuff is like whatever to Euro horror and Giallo people. They're like, yeah, this is all the movies you would cover. Uh, but then we throw in some really strange, like we try to do a little Asian horror here and there. Um, I know Asian horror, it, it's not as Simon might be the most into it. And it's not like you or Jeffrey dislike it, but I guess, you know, those, those are not your go-to films. I mean, I do like it. Yeah. It's hard for me to like work in those titles of who am I going to talk with about this freaking weird mid eighties Japanese horror movie that no one's freaking heard of. Like that's, you know, and, and, uh, hero, hero ghost show was kind of like my chance 
that Bo gave me to have an outlet for that. Bo likes to do a series of movies with me, so we do all the sequels. Like, we did all the I movies, which uh, that was rough. That was pretty rough. Good time talking, less fun watching. <laughs> but yeah, I got you. We but we've been all over the map. Thanks to Jeffrey, we talked about a freaking uh, an, an Italian comedy where they they had a guy who looked like John Travolta, mm-hmm. the face with two left feet. I mean, that's one of the weirdest movies I've ever seen in my life. Bam. Scott brought the gotcha. I think Leah and I should just do a Grease two episode. Get it over with. Dolores, go home. Hello, hello. This is the Doom Show. Richard, Brad, Jeffrey, Nava. are moving into brad's questions this is the brad question zone you feel the you feel the pressure or the pleasure you should be feeling both i'm feeling full (laughs) we had corn dogs for dinner Ooh, i love corn dogs yeah it was nice oven yep yes we don't own don't have a microwave we don't own a microwave we're not from the future we're in the past Mm. bro Yes. (laughs) <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right, I've got a few. Uh, I've got a few quick hits. Uh, just kind of some fun stuff. Yeah. And episode one hundred. What did you and I? What names did you and I introduce ourselves as? <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Oh, that's a tough one. Were we doing a radio show bit? Or like we were doing like radio DJs or. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. You you introduced yourself as something, and then I just followed it. Oh my god! No, I have no idea. What did I do? <laughs> what did we do? You introduced yourself as Jake, and I introduced myself as Lloyd. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when I was creative? Yesterday, a minute ago. <laughs> oh, that's great! I'm glad you picked up on that. <laughs> yeah, I remember you going. You're listening to the douche. From <laughs> from Parks and Rec. Yes. I ran the douche. <laughs> Are you dropping so that funny. on me? I'd never seen that. Yeah. Which episode did you play the song, Do You Believe in Magic by the Lovin' Spoonful? Oh, frickin' uh, Girls' Night Out. Yeah, I figured if you got one of these, <laughs> that would be it. Because it's in the whole movie. Do you believe in magic, 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 magic? Which episode did you call yourself Tracy Lords? <laughs> I have no idea. I do these bits and they're gone from my memory. They're gone. <laughs> that would be episode 89, The Evil. Oh my god. I'm Tracy Lords. I can hear myself saying it in my head, so you, you know I you, you know I've listened to that episode a few times. In which episode did I drop the alternate lyrics from Carl Jackson Crawley? To Michael Jackson's immortal, <laughs> get up, make a poster. Can't Don't stop. stop you get it up. <laughs> I think was that a Halloween episode? Uh, 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 maybe because I remember I did a remix because I found the, an instrumental version of the song and then threw your lyrics over it. Like mm-hmm. you were singing it, but now what episode was that? He Knows You're Alone, episode oh, 128. Damn it. I listen to that all the time. Oh, my God. See, this is so funny because I, I am obsessed with our show. I listen to our show uh-huh. so much, but the, I listen to too much of it, so none of this shit sticks with me. <laughs> right. Uh, my last quick hit question What film title character did you say that you were going to dress up as? For no reason. Film title character. Uh huh. Oh man, what would I have done that for? I it's can't... also one we've mentioned tonight. I can't even think of it. Antropophagus. Oh my god, yes. Freaking dressing up like George Eastman. I, you know that's one I 
do not remember saying that at all. Yep, you did. Wow, I could dress. Yeah. I could dress like him in, in as part two, where he's just got a sh- shirt, and I'd have to buy some jeans. Fun fact: I don't own any jeans. Wow. Yeah, I got tired of like buying them, and then, then I stopped. So now I just wear slacks. You're a slack guy now. I'm definitely slacking. Adult. But those are great. So I've got, those are amazing questions. Thank you. Yeah. I listened to uh, listen to some episodes You're and just picked out some funny stuff. You're a historian so of the I've show. So I've got an actual question time. I, we can't have a 10th anniversary and not have an actual question Man, time. Your question times are my favorite. Let's do this. Oh, too kind. So this plays into something that I've seen recently. So I thought I would pose the question. Is there a horror film remake that you think is better than the original? Ooh, I think my answer will not surprise you. Um, I think let me, let me make sure. Let me let me scan my brain real quick. This is my sure. I had two jump into my brain at the exact same moment. One, I know you. I gonna... didn't consult with you. I no, kept it kept it safe, kept it secret. No, we rarely do that. Usually, if it's gonna be like a list. Something yeah. something big. We'll do we'll we'll do it in advance. But most of the time, question time is off the cuff. I would say, for my money, that the Hills Have Eyes remake. <laughs> but the one that jumped into my head, poor Wes Craven, is uh, freaking um, Last House on the Left. Dad, go, man. Those are my answers. Cause I I like parts of um, Last House on the Left. I like parts of it. The comedy uh-huh. cops, of course is is wretched but i wretched l- i love that remake when it came out i have not seen it since but we i watched it this weekend how'd it go uh, <laughs> it is fantastic nice. it's a great movie awesome uh, um, uh i think about nafa said that he did not have to see a horror film for a while Yes. Because he was satisfied. And I think it is it is vastly superior, in my opinion, yeah. to the original. And then as a, you know, as a corollary, the remake of The Last House on the Left, I really enjoy. Yeah. And not so much the original. Yes. Because I watched, thanks to Joe Bob, I revisited some things. Um, I had not mm-hmm. seen, I had not seen uh, The Hills Have Eyes for, you know, 20 years. Maybe right. th- maybe. Th- Maybe like 30 years. It had been a really long time. Mm-hmm. And I remember watching and learning about it from that show I saw in the 80s called uh, This is Horror or Stephen King's World of Horror. Mm-hmm. And they talked about why Hills Have Eyes was so good. And I rented it and I was like, oh, huh, okay. And I never had any reason to revisit it until Joe Bob hosted it. I, I did enjoy watching it again but the remake is just so brutal and so intense Boy. and it's not corny no yeah we we've talked about remakes a bit on this show uh but there, yeah, there, I, there's ones like that they did a great job like the evil dead mm-hmm. remake uh they did a great yeah. job with that it is not better than the first sure the first is one of my favorite movies of all time and it, you know the remake just blew me away but it's still the the jury's still out on how I feel because I finally picked up that unrated, the director's cut. I believe I did, it's a director's cut. I did too because you had talked about it. Yeah, and I was and like, you had before it came out. You talked about hoping that they would release it, and then they finally did. Yeah. I had so Matthew came up. We went and saw it at the theater, and I have not seen it since. Yeah, I did pick up the theatrical regular Blu-ray mm-hmm. and had not watched it, and then. Uh, with some birthday Amazon, I thought, yeah, the time's right. Yeah. It's, so I picked up the, the, the director's cut or the, the uncut. Or... The theatrical does hold up. I still have a few nitpicks with it, but I'm curious to see what you think. And I'm curious to see what I think of this uncut version, because I believe it adds a whole seven minutes or five minutes. Yeah. It's yeah. Ridiculous. It's seven. Wow. Uh, um, I really... <clears throat> I really enjoyed it. It was a perfect theater experience. Matthew would come up. We went over, saw it. Nice. Um, but yeah, no, those were my two exact uh, <laughs> answers. The Hills Have Eyes, because we watched yeah. this weekend, and it's brutal. Oh, man, we needed to do an episode on that Fog remake, huh? Ooh. I've never seen that. <laughs> we did do an episode on the prom night remake we tried we tried we found out that it had, we had nothing to say because it was nothing 
Uh, it's on it's on Netflix right now, and the the tagline was films that are popular, and I'm like, this is a lie. <laughs> oh my god, you'll never you'll never touch slick. Ugh. Never. So so my one last thing on my end. Yes. Uh, did you think we would get this far? I would say that. I don't know. I, I think about the other show that inspired us, uh, the B movie cast. Uh huh. And, and you know they went on so long, and then and unfortunately Vince passed away. Yes. And, and thank goodness they kept going because you know he was the heart of that show, and, and you know, everyone on the sh- everyone on the show is amazing. But you know he was so fun, and he was so funny when he would get that website wrong. Mm-hmm. Every every episode, it was a total crapshoot as to what he was going to say. My favorite was the B movie dot website. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God bless him. Yeah. yeah. Where he always, uh, a- an AIP film, he called an API film, I think. <laughs> Such a nice guy. Totally. I tried to imagine us getting to, uh, to like episode 200. I never thought of how much time was passing because it never seemed right. like the time was passing quickly. It always seemed like. We were getting to the the crazy number of episodes, but I, you know, I think you you hit on a point there. Like, based on how many hours we were doing on like mm-hmm. the the Fulci yellow films, where that's mm-hmm. a, that's a solid two and a half three hour block. I think yeah, I saw an ending to the show in that regard. It wasn't until we started to to loosen it up a little bit and get a little shorter put out some some just goof off episodes episode i really miss a series we were doing i'd love to bring back was the best of the year we used to, like 2012 talked about our oh, favorite yeah. movies from 2012 where we talked about maybe a few movies that came out that year but we always talked about our favorite first time watches of that year yeah and well, I'm, I'm down I'm, for that yeah we should bring that back that'd be really cool but no i i guess i never i never imagined we'd be doing this in 10 years down the road I think it's something that that you don't really think about, like you said. We've always been about covering films we liked. That way you don't have an episode of an hour and a half or two hours of us just dogging something. Yes. The podcast exists for us, not the other way around. Yep. So we recorded when we could, when it worked out. It was, It never became a chore. That's something that when I talk to folks, which is not very often, but but folks that listen, <laughs> that's one thing they seem to appreciate is our positivity. Dude, uh, yeah. Why, why, why would you do a podcast and fill it with films that you didn't like? I mean, I guess if you're current events, new films all the time, you know, maybe that would happen, but, but that was never, that was never what this show was going to be. No. And that, that's one of the things I, th- I found so funny was a lesson I learned from a show that I haven't listened to in many years was, uh, we hate movies. And mm-hmm. one of the jaw dropping moments was they got through just eviscerating a film on every level on, you know, the, 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 even the, one of the big things in that show for a long time, I haven't listened to it in forever was they would pick apart like the moral choices of the characters and how they're terrible examples to set for the audience. And that stuff really cracks me up. But then at the end of the episode, after dogging this movie, they'd be like, so how do you guys like this one? Oh, I love it. <laughs> I have watched this three times to prepare for this episode, and I love it. Each, I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. How do you love something you just spent hours ripping apart? And I think yeah. that was something that Jeffrey and I, without talking about it, both kind of brought to it. Because like we talked about, he brings the weird stuff. He brings really unusual offbeat fare that Mm -hmm. would be quote unquote bad movies but then at the end of the episode like so jeffrey how do you feel about this oh i love it you know like of course jeffrey loves it yeah you know there's very few things that he picks usually what what works out is that i picked something and he has to suffer through it and i'm like so jeffrey what'd you think and he's like i i i don't know why you picked this and (laughs) (laughs) I'm like, no. Mm. So yeah, we've always tried to stay positive with this stuff. Um, you yeah. Know, hey, that and that's what like our little segments, like one I'm about to introduce 
uh, like real talk with Brad. Occasionally you'd, you'd let loose on something, but usually it was in when you say real talk with Brad, you're talking about something positive. You're bringing up right. you're bringing up something that people don't want to talk about in a positive light. <laughs> right. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's I can't listen to especially if it's one of my favorite films or just something I, I think is neat even. If I hear someone go bonkers against it, I'm kind of like, yeah, why am I here? Because yeah. I'll go back to listening to people talk about comic books or I'll go back to listen to, I mean, folks who've listened to me all these years. It's probably not a secret that I'm I'm a less, last podcast on the left listener since – right. I've been listening to them since they were on episode 100 or episode 80 or some ridiculous. I've been listening to them for years and years and years. And occasionally I let uh, some uh, some Henry Zabrowski sneak into some of my jokes. Not too often. Want a PG show here, people. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, like uh, I, I, I just have trouble dealing with like people that might hate on something. I don't know. And like just for example, like like idle hands, like even even Simon and I ripping on ripping bong hits on idle hands with our spliff talking and our our freaking uh, lime pillows we've been smoking on with our reefer sticks. Reefer sticks. We love that movie. So of course, like I can't handle people disliking it. I'm like, no. <laughs> So yeah, we'll always be a positive show until uh, a few minutes from now when I start getting negative. Right. Because I want to introduce a new segment called Richard's Unpopular Opinions. Uh. I have three unpopular opinions. One of them I think will make horror fans cringe. Uh, I have another one that will make slasher fans cringe. Then I have mm. a, I have another one that's going to make slasher fans cringe. I am not privy to these. So you have this not heard of these. My, my first time hearing <laughs> All right, let's, this new segment. Uh, let's rip off the Band-Aid and talk about this thing, which I am not dissing people who enjoy this. No. I am not saying it's not a valuable piece of art. In fact, I think it's a wonderful piece of art. But here we go, folks. I don't like The Wicker Man. Very, well, very good. I knew that. I know you knew that. I've never talked about yeah. this, I don't think, on the show. Noff and I did the the, the Nicolas Cage remake years ago, but I don't uh -huh. think I talked about, I can hear Noff in my head, Wicca, the Widow mm. Man of Wicca. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what, what is the other thing he would do in that episode? Um, sweetener. Can I get some sweetener? Sweetener. Anyway, <laughs> I think I have read more about The Wicker Man than times I've watched it. I think I've seen it twice. I rented it when I was a teenager. When I was mm -hmm. in my, my uh, I must rent every horror movie in this place. I was very confused. And I watched it again when, when Liat and I were dating. And I got back into horror movies. And I have had zero interest in revisiting it again. I feel like I know it. Back and forth. Right. Because you know, I've just read. So I have a whole book called Folk Horror that just the whole opening chapter of that movie, I've just read and read about it. And I, I respect it, but I cannot imagine me as, as a person sitting through it like right now. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. And I don't know what it is. I totally see that. I don't know what it is. Not my style, I guess. I hate good. No, <laughs> no. I mean, it's an odd film. The first time I saw it, I saw it with Matthew and we just, we made a lot of jokes. Uh, about the singing corn and the Mountain Dew can of prosperity. And <laughs> but the next time I saw it, I really, really liked it. Elizabeth is a huge Wicker Man film fan. I, I, wanted we've to, got, I wanted to hurt her. Yeah. No. Uh, we've got the little, the little box, the wooden box. Yes. It's got the, we've got that. We've also got the Blu-ray. But also, I can totally see... How how you would not be a be a fan? Uh, there's nothing wrong with that, obviously. Yeah. No, that is that is an unpopular opinion. I wanted to, I wanted to hurt our fans, right? Just like Eliz just like Elizabeth. Was yes. was that was that you opening a box cutter to slash me? It was. Oh well, I deserve it. I'm really gonna no. deserve. I'm re here comes here comes the opinion that is. This is nothing to do with reality. This is me being stupid. <laughs> <laughs> this is something that you guys are going to think is so dumb. 
I can't tell the Jasons apart. Now, I'm not talking about the punk band, the Jasons. Right. Who dress like Jason Voorhees. I cannot tell the Jasons apart in the different movies. Now, I know Jason X looks different from Baghead Jason, but like right. it could have been the same guy in every movie. No disrespect to the wonderful people who've played Jason Voorhees over the years. None of that is like me trying to harsh on you. I watch these movies a lot. I don't watch them nearly as much because apparently we don't have enough Friday the 13th in the year for my for my comfort level uh and it's hey there's no reason not to watch friday the 13th movies anytime you want but you know with so many movies in my queue all the time and shows in my queue i like I like to pull a simon once in a while and do things because simon is the king of it's this director's birthday it's this actress's birthday it's the death day of such and such person let's watch this hey this came out 20 years simon's on the man on this like he's the man on the scene he's johnny on the spot hey we discussed that today oddly him and i both simonicity yeah the simonicity he loves to watch stuff when they come around that's great uh but with friday the 13th i just don't watch them enough but i cannot freaking tell you which actor is playing which jason in any of the movies i never notice the subtleties i never notice i barely notice the masks um i remember talking with you about the michael myers masks and being like <laughs> How, why are they are they different and you're like oh my god dude are you joking <laughs> and i just don't i just don't notice like it's just it's just weird this weird thing i have where i'm like oh which one's kane hodder you know like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I, and that's and that's trivia i find fascinating i have that friday the 13th book that, mm-hmm. that monumental tome. And I love reading that book, but there's something about th- that thing. And I've watched like the Friday the 13th documentaries. And it still doesn't, it doesn't stick with me. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, like my favorite is Baghead Jason, but of the hockey mask Jason, right. I think Richard Brooker is my favorite. Which one, which movie was that? Three. Yes. I love three. Had no idea who that was. Again, yeah, Richard yeah. Brooker. Oh my god, I'll get it together one day. But yeah, it's just one of those weird things. Uh, just like I never noticed the masks. Uh, my favorite mask, of course, is the CGI mask from uh, Halloween H two O. I freaking H two O. When you pointed that out to me, I could not unsee it. <laughs> that is often, <laughs> usually, that is my profile picture on Facebook. Is that mask just to drive people crazy? Sorry. But speaking of it, here comes my last. Richard's unpopular opinions, and this will come as no surprise to anyone who knows me. I love all, to date, all of the Halloween movies, the Halloween franchise. Yeah, you do. There is not a bad film in the entire Halloween franchise. The only one I'm not enjoying, like, a lot. I I enjoy it when I watch it, but I I don't get it out as often as the brand new one. It's Mm -hmm. 2018. Uh, H40. I am excited about the next one, and I have already watched H40 like five times. But compare that to how many times I've seen Halloween Resurrection, and it's just no comparison. Mm -hmm. Uh, I love Halloween Resurrection. I love Rob Zombie's Halloween. Um, Yeah, you do. I don't watch that one. That one ranks around... Uh, H forty for me. I, I don't. I watch those two the the uh, the least. Mm-hmm. But Rob Zombie's Halloween two in my top five favorite horror films of all time. I want to crawl inside that movie and die. I love it so much. Um, I love Halloween two, the, the real Halloween two, the OG. I love mm-hmm. freaking Halloween four and five. And this opinion has is evolved over the years. I recorded a movie thon where I watched all the Halloween movies from dawn until, you know, the the next dawn, you know. Mm-hmm. And I had all these candy ass opinions about how I hated part 5 and all this and part 6 sucked and all this stupid shit. And now I'm like, nope, they're all hmm. great. And that joy you get from watching movies too many times plus being able to accept all universes is a big thing with Halloween for me. Uh, yes, I accept all the timelines equally and love them equally. I accept Rob Zombie's freaking redneckery 
I accept H hmm. forties revisionist retcon bullshit with J- Jamie's not the sister anymore. Mm-hmm. Which I think that's that's what they. I feel like they did that just to get John Carpenter to do the soundtrack. Like they're like, "Hey, dude, would you come back into the soundtrack?" And he's like, "I will, but on one condition: <laughs> mm. <laughs> reverse our mistakes from the past." Uh, yeah, those are my three opinions. I I hope they uh, aren't too bad. Great. But folks, that is that's ten years of Doom Show. We recorded another three hundred and fourteen hours just now. Just now, Rod and Troy, so much to answer for. Yep, yep. You can thank them for this whole mess. Yeah, you can. And you can thank us for, I guess, not stopping. <laughs> we could have stopped a minute ago, but we didn't. But we kept on going, brother. We're still going. Um, Let's see. We talked about the death of the old salesman. Death of the old salesman. We did a Jello Jello Who Moved the Tombstone. Yeah, we did. Folks, thank you for listening. And uh, really, just you rock. You're amazing. You do. Um, doomedmoviethon at gmail.com. If you ever want to just uh, shoot the Schmidt with me and hit up Brad or hit up Jeffrey, uh, just go through that email and I'll forward it on. And uh, if you want us to talk about something or you want to say, hey, I've been listening forever. You didn't talk about me. Come on. We'll do it. We'll talk about you. Yeah, we'll talk about you. (laughs) Yeah, we will. (laughs) Good night. Good night, sir. Bye. Hello, this is The Doom Show is a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network. Please check out the other podcasts on legionpodcasts.com. If you'd like more Hello, This is the Doom Show, go to hellodoomshow.podomatic.com or go to doom.